Okay, in this video we're going to talk about finding definite integrals from graphs, and this is kind of like the absolute value video. Um, and people find these maybe the most challenging, I guess, because there's kind of a lot going on. Um, so let's see what we need to know before we can do it. So there's a property that's going to be really important. And the property is this. f of the absolute value of x is an even function. It has to be because if you do f of uh, negative x, that's f of the absolute value of negative x, which is obviously just f of x. So f of negative x equals f of x, so by definition an even function. So what that means in terms of the graph is um, it's got to be an even function, and more importantly, it's only going to look like the positive part of the graph and the positive part reflected over the y-axis. So the first thing that you do when you're creating the graph of f of the absolute value of x is you immediately just discard the graph for x less than zero. Whatever is sitting there, you just kind of get rid of it. Um, and then after you get rid of that, what you do is you reflect the graph that's left, so that's all the stuff that's to the right of zero, over the y-axis, and you get a symmetric graph. And that's really important because it allows us to calculate definite integrals based only on the right-hand side of the graph, kind of. Um, we're going to do some examples because that's definitely the weirdest one. Um, so there's three places that an absolute value can go when you're doing integrals. So those are the following. So we can have the absolute value of the definite integral. So if you think about it, definite integrals are just numbers. So this is really just saying take the absolute value of whatever number you get. So in this case, you're going to do the definite integral the normal way. So uh, however you work that out. Um, and then whatever you get, you're just going to take that answer and you're going to make it positive. So if you get negative 25 when you do the definite integral, the absolute value of that is positive 25 and you're done. So that one's, uh, that one's pretty similar to what we've been doing. Um, the next place it can go is a little weirder, but still not hard to deal with. So it's the integral from a to b of the absolute value of f of x dx. Um, so this is definitely not normal. So you don't just take the definite integral kind of ignoring the absolute value sign. What you're going to do instead is you're going to look at it and you're going to think all of my signed areas, so anywhere the area uh, was negative, those are going to have to become positive because if you think about the transformation, what the absolute value of f of x does is it reflects all the negative parts of the graph, the parts where it's below the x-axis, over the x-axis. So they become positive regions. Um, so those, again, are not really hard to deal with. There's a third case, which uh, goes back to the property we discussed, and that's this. So you could have the integral from a to b of f of the absolute value of x and then dx. So this, again, it's not bad, but it's definitely the weirdest case. Um, and it's much harder to talk about it than it is to do. So um, instead of talking about it, we're just going to end up doing one. So uh, we're going to do an example of each, uh, maybe more than one for uh, that third thing. So let's take a look. So say we want the absolute value of the integral from 4 to 9 of f of x dx. So this we just look at this, this region here from 4 to 9, um, is actually just going to be negative 8.5. So it's a trapezoid and then a little tiny triangle is how I found that area. Um, so this integral is going to be the absolute value of negative 8.5, and that's obviously 8.5. So that's uh, the most straightforward one. They don't, they don't get easier than that, really. Um, let's take a look at another one. So it's going to be a little different. We want the integral from negative 6 to negative 3 of the absolute value of f of x dx. So this is a little different because from uh, negative 6 to negative 4.5, f of x is below the x-axis. So what we can do is we can reflect that over. So uh, negative 6, negative 2 is on the original graph. So uh, negative 6, positive 2 is on the absolute value of f of x. And uh, negative 5, negative 1 is on the original graph. So negative 5 positive 1 would be on the absolute value of f of x. And then we can connect lines with lines, uh, or points with lines because it's linear. So really what we're trying to find is uh, this region that's above the x-axis here, and also this region. Um, and we can do that, uh, I'm going to split it again just to make it a little simpler. So here we have, uh, it's like two trapezoids and two triangles, but it's easier to think of it as a square and a triangle, a square and a triangle, and then half of a unit square. So this is 1.5. This is also 1.5. And then each of those little triangles is one quarter of a unit. So collectively, this and this are 0.5. So to find this definite integral, I just add up those numbers. So overall, that gives me 3.5. And that's that definite integral. Let's do another one that's like this. So we got the integral from negative 1 to 9 
of the absolute value of f of x dx. I'm going to do this one a little differently, um, and this is a more common way to do it. So I'm going to kind of note the region. And so I've got two regions, and I've done these a bunch of times if you've watched all the videos. So I know that this region right here has an area of 10.5. Uh, you can do a trapezoid plus a little triangle, or you can break it up into a rectangle, a triangle, a triangle. It's your choice, whatever you want to do. So that has an area of 10.5. And then this region, you can break up in pretty much the same way, a trapezoid and a triangle or whatever. Overall, that has an area of negative 8.5. And so uh, what most people do to evaluate this is they actually just say that it's going to be 10.5 plus the absolute value of negative 8.5, which is just 8.5. Um, so they'll write it like that. It's a little simpler than actually reflecting the graph, but reflecting the graph is really what you're doing. So if you're into showing a lot of work, that's what you would do. Uh, all right, let's take a look at another one. So here we have the integral from negative 9 to negative 5 of f of the absolute value of x dx. So this one's kind of weird. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to create the graph of f of the absolute value of x. It's going to look a little messy. Um, but what I'm doing is I'm just reflecting points. I'm going to reflect key points. So like 3, 1 is a key point, uh, 5, negative 1 is a key point, and then 9, negative 3, which doesn't even really fit. So instead I'm going to do 7, negative 2. So I got some points. So there are my key points. I'm going to connect them. So 0, 3 point, whatever that is, stays in place. So I'm going to connect, connect, connect. So I really want the integral from negative 9 to negative 5 of this new graph, the kind of red one that's to the left there. So that region is what I'm looking for. But if you think about it by symmetry, the region from negative 9 to negative 5 of my new graph is exactly the same as the region from 5 to 9 of the original. So I'm actually going to use the region from 5 to 9. So here's the region I really want to use um, because these are exactly the same region, or the same size, I should say. They're reflections of each other. They're not exactly the same. Um, and I already know, or you can calculate, that this has an area, well, we're going 5 to 9 of f of x dx. Got to write that down, I guess. Um, so that has an area of negative 8. So the original integral is also going to be equal to negative 8. Um, and that's how I usually do these. I actually look at just the, the right-hand side of the graph and work out what I need to work out based on that. Uh, let's do another one. So we want to go from negative 7 to negative 3 of f of the absolute value of x dx. So, um, I know that from negative 7 to negative 3 is going to be exactly the same by symmetry as the integral from 3 to 7 of f of x dx. Because remember, f of the absolute value of x is an even graph. That's the thing to keep in mind. It's an even graph. So sometimes I find myself just drawing x squared, which is also an even graph, to kind of like work out what would need to happen. Um, so I got this. And now I want to find this area. So equals, uh, so from 3 to 7, and then I know that from 3 to 5, I get two regions that are just going to cancel each other. Um, like this region is positive 1 half, this is negative 1 half, those are gone. So really I'm just going from 5 to 7, and that you can look at and see it's a rectangle and a triangle, and they add up to negative 3. So the integral overall is just negative 3, um, and that's how you do it. So I'm going to do one more but then um, I'm not actually going to calculate it. So if I wanted to go from negative 3 to 3 of f of the absolute value of x dx, this might be the most common type uh, is where you have like symmetric bounds. So it's an even function. So we know for even functions, we can always just say that it is twice the integral from 0 to 3 of f of regular x, not absolute value of x dx. Um, and then I realized was it, when I was doing this that this has a very bad y-intercept and I didn't really want to do it, so I actually use a calculator to evaluate it. The calculator said that that gives me 51 over 4, which you could probably check by hand somehow, but I didn't. Um, okay, so that's three different ways that absolute values will show up in definite integrals. I hope you found this helpful, and good luck.